Hello guys, welcome back. There's no denying that Apple MacBooks are some of the most stylish and cutting edge computers out there, truly worthy of a gallery exhibition. But today's video is not about the latest and greatest, but the old and forgotten. Enter the 2008 Unibody MacBook. Truth is, many of these old MacBooks still do a fine job for tasks such as browsing the internet and streaming content. One of the easiest and most inexpensive ways to boost its performance is by upgrading both the hard disk and RAM. In addition to this, I will also attempt to minimize some of the battle scars located on the battery door and bottom case. My name is Alex and in today's video I will be upgrading a 2008 Unibody MacBook. Are you guys ready? Let's go! I started first by verifying the overall specs to see if the parts were upgradable. A good resource is a website called everymac.com which indicates that this MacBook unofficially supports a total of 8GB of RAM. Based on all the positive reviews, I went ahead and ordered the crucial PC3 8500 8GB kit from Amazon which includes two 4GB models for $56.99. Currently, this MacBook only has 2GB of total memory and it is very sluggish and struggling to do certain tasks. The site also indicates that you will need to have Snow Leopard as your operating system on your MacBook. Regarding storage options, according to Everyday Mac, this particular model supports a single 2.5 inch solid state drive that is up to 9.5 mm thick. For the hard drive, I opted for Samsung's 500GB 860 EVO solid state drive. I ordered this drive from Amazon for $89.99. If you want to keep your existing documents and install programs, which is in my case, you will need a SATA to USB cable in order to connect the new drive to your MacBook and transfer your information. After searching online, I ordered this StarTech cable for $13 on Amazon. To back up the existing drive, I originally intended to use Song's Magician backup software, but later realized it only works on Windows. Rather than searching for additional software online, I opted to use the MacBook's Disk Utility software to create a copy of my current hard drive into the new one. First, connect your new drive to the SATA to USB cable and connect the cable to a USB port on your MacBook. Once on Disk Utilities, select Erase at the top in order to erase and format your new drive. It's important that you select the specs that match your current drive, which in this case is macOS Extended Journal. Select Don't Use when Disk Utilities ask if you want to use the drive to back up Time Machine. Click Erase to confirm and Disk Utilities will unmount and format the disk. Once completed, select Restore at the top. You will then proceed to drag and drop each drive on your left into each blank on the right, assigning the new disk as its destination and the old one as the source. Click Restore and it will ask to confirm erasing and replacing your disk. Enter your admin password and press OK. Select Don't Use when prompted to use the new disk with Time Machine. Disk Utilities will then create an exact copy of your old drive in a process that could take up to an hour. Once it is finished, you can check how the new drive works before doing the actual installation by restarting your MacBook and pressing the Option key during startup. This will show you a boot screen with all the available drive options. You will then select the new drive to start. Once you have verified and everything works fine, you can then proceed to shut down your computer and get ready for installation. Before you begin replacing your drive, you will need a well-lighted area and a non-abrasive surface to work on. You will also need a Phillips 00 and a Torx T6 screwdriver. It's always a good idea to back up your files before starting as a precaution. Making sure the MacBook is off, turn the MacBook over and use the latch at the bottom to remove the battery panel. After removing the battery, using the Phillips 00 screwdriver, 
Begin by removing the four screws that are close on the edge of the battery compartment area. Next, you will proceed to remove the remaining four screws located on the opposite side close to the hinge. Since some of them are longer than others, it's really important you keep them organized, as you will need to place them back in the same order as you took them off. To remove the hard disk drive, use the Phillips screwdriver to remove the single screw and the retaining bar. Gently, remove the drive from the bay and detach the SATA connector. Using the Torx T6 screwdriver, remove the mountain pins on each side of the disc. Don't forget to remove the plastic tab as you will need this and the mountain pins on your new drive. Screw the mountain pins to your new drive in the same position as you remove them. Slide the SATA connector to your new drive. Go ahead and stick the plastic tab on the side. Then position the drive inside the bay, making sure the pins on each side fall in place. Finally, screw back the retaining bar. You have now finished replacing your drive. To replace your memory, begin by locating the modules. You can remove the first module by pushing out the retaining clips. The module then will automatically pop at an angle. Repeat the same process to remove the second module underneath. Begin installing your new RAM by sliding the new model at an angle on the lower slot. Once it's secured in place, push the model down to snap it in. Repeat the process to install the module on the top. You have now completed installing your new RAM. For the battery door and bottom case, I decided to spray them using Rosolium's Painter's Touch Ultra Cover in metallic aluminum satin finish. From the get-go, I am truly aware the color won't be a perfect match, but it will, at the very least, look clean by hiding the light scratches and scuff marks. After letting the case and battery door dry up for a couple of hours, I went ahead and installed the four rubber feet it had missing at the bottom. I found a kit on Amazon that got the job done. It even included a set of screws. While placing the rubber feet, I used the glove to minimize the risk of embedding any fingerprints on the freshly painted panels. I initially thought I would need some extra glue to secure the rubber feet, but the included adhesive was more than enough to keep them in place. Once the panels were ready, I finally proceeded to place back the bottom case and begin replacing the screws in the same position as I got them out. I started with the ones close to the hinge. Once the case was secured, I went ahead and replaced the four screws close to the edge of the battery panel. Finish the job by replacing the battery and closing the battery door. Make sure the latch is positioned up 
or the battery door won't close. Once done, turn your laptop over and start it up. If you press the option key and go to About This Mac, it should indicate under System Information that you now have 8 gigabytes of total RAM, in addition to indicating your upgraded drive specs. It's important to mention that Trim support for third-party solid-state drives is not available on older operating systems such as 10.9. Trim support allows the system to tell the solid-state drive which data blocks are no longer in use, helping to improve the performance and extend the life of your new drive. I found a third-party app line called Trim Enabler 4. It allows you to enable or disable Trim support and includes older versions compatible with macOS 10.9 included with your purchase. I spent several hours doing research online and opted to upgrade the system from macOS 10.6 Snow Leopard all the way up to macOS 10.9 Mavericks. Up to this point, the MacBook seems to run smooth with no problems. Now beyond macOS Mavericks, I have read online that many users have had issues with their MacBooks and some have even opted to go back to Snow Leopard or even Lion. Overall, you will find that this upgrade will breathe new life into your MacBook. You will notice the difference on its daily operations, as it should be way more effective running multiple tasks. Online media sites, such as YouTube, loaded up fairly quickly. I did notice an alert indicating that support for my current browser would stop soon. Nevertheless, videos were streaming pretty quickly without any issues. 12 years ago, Apple created this amazing MacBook, defining cutting-edge technology, along with style and performance. If you currently own one, upgrading the hard disk and RAM is surely one of the most significant, yet simple and cost-effective upgrades you can do. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and leave your comments below. This is Alex for Ready Set Go. Till next time.